Raise your hand if you know why you're here. Excellent, excellent. Welcome to Yara's Coexist 2014. My name is Amir Shahada. I'm 27 years old. And I established an NGO when I was actually 24 years old. The NGO is called Yara. Is anyone named Yara in this auditorium, by the way? Wow, a lot of people. Okay. <laughs> Are you raising your hand? You're a guy. Come on, man. Okay. <laughs> YARA stands for the Youth Association for Reality and Awareness. And what we do is we try to raise people's consciousness levels and alert levels so that we can become more active into our societies. So we can become more active citizens into making the change. We do many projects over the past four years from education to environment to religion and to sustainable projects. Yet one of our most important projects is called Coexist. And Coexist is a project in observance of the World Interfaith Harmony Week. And this is an initiative of His Majesty King Abdullah, and he proposed the idea to the United Nations in 2010. And they liked the idea, so they said, hey, why don't we do this every year, the first week of February? So our event, Yaros Coexist, we voluntarily participated to hold such an event, and our event is called Coexist. For the previous years, we kind of had our Coexist quite different. We would have speakers, around six or seven of them, speaking to the audience, and the age group was a bit older. But we saw a necessity. We saw an importance that we should be speaking to the younger generation. Because the real change, literally, is within our hands. I'll speak from this mic until we get the other one on. So for our previous event, we also were speaking about you know, similarities of different religions and what does faith and society have to do. This year, we're speaking with Baccalaureate, and this year we're gonna be speaking about coexisting with the world, human's responsibility on Earth. So we're here to talk about coexistence. I wanna ask you guys, what does coexistence mean? What does coexist mean? I want you guys to interact. This is not gonna be a boring 40 minute speech from me to you. I wanna get you guys interacted. So let's raise some hands. Let's see what coexist means. We have mics on the left and the right. Anyone? Up there, please, mic. Here you go, here's another mic on the right. Yes, there's a mic up there. What's coexistence? To live in harmony. Great. Take something on the right. Do we have any hands on the right? Okay, right here. Here's a microphone. Living together. Living together. Beautiful. Acting, sorry? Hold on. Can you push the on button, actually? To help the existence of the human world on Earth. Beautiful, beautiful, great. From you guys' definitions, let's conclude that coexistence is living peacefully with the world, correct? It's to respect everyone and everything. It's to attain peace and justice. I want to pause on one important topic, which is respecting people's opinions. You don't necessarily have to accept someone's opinion, but I think by default as humans we should respect it because we all have free will. Don't you guys agree? We're different. We have opinions and we have the freedom of choice. So therefore, when we share our opinions, we must respect it, but not necessarily accept it. And there's a very nice thin line between these two concepts. Respecting people's opinions is a must, in my opinion. 
yet accepting it is a different issue. So basically, we need to be a bit more tolerant and patient with others. There are more than 7 billion people in the world, and the majority of them identify with religion as their source of morals and ethics. The major world religions are Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, and Buddhism. We have many different religions, correct? But don't they all teach the same basics and the same morals and concepts? If we want to define religion, we, we can understand that religion, it's a way of living. Religion is a lifestyle. Religion is what teaches us what's right and what's wrong, what to do and what not to do. Religion is a complete system that enhances our lives from a spiritual perspective, an ethical perspective, an intellectual perspective, and a behavioral perspective. It's a complete package. So I'm here today to talk about how religion influences humans' role on Earth. And since 55% of the world's population is either Muslim or Christian, let's draw some examples and see what the Bible and the Quran have to say on humans' role on Earth. In the Bible, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, it reads, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Let's emphasize a bit on the first sentence. We're supposed to be fruitful. We're supposed to respect and be respectful. We're supposed to increase in number and have families so that we can do goodness on this earth. What about the Quran? In chapter 2, verse 30, it says, O prophet, when your Lord told the angels, I am putting a successor on earth. They said, the angel said, how can you put someone there who will cause damage and bloodshed? And we celebrate your praise and proclaim your holiness. But God said, I know things you do not. Did you guys hear that word? Again, he said, I am putting a successor on earth. Does anyone know what successor means? An Arabic successor is Khalifa. So anyone whose last name is Khalifa can participate as well. We have a hand right here. Can we have the microphone, please? And just respond once you get the microphone, please. Go ahead. Yes. A Khalifa is someone that rules all the Muslims and tells them what to do. And Interesting. He's, and he's the one who decides the wars and what you should do. Beautiful, beautiful. Can we get someone on the left side to participate? What is successor? We have a hand right here, please. Yes, right here. In the front, front, front. Big auditorium. Just pass the mic down. We should be OK. Successor. What does successor mean? Stand up, please, so I can see you. There we go. Okay, what if we were to take the word successor? No, it's okay, we got you, yes. Okay, great, great. <laughs> let's take the word successor, and let's explain a little bit about what successor is. Successor does not mean to have control or authority, or power, because this usually leads to what? Thank you very much. Wars, corruption, crime, chaos. So it's more of a negative connotation. Rather, successor means to be a caretaker, responsible, a curator, a vicegerent. So here, Successor means to act on behalf of someone to take care of Earth. Therefore, we humans take care of the world on behalf of God in the same manner that our prophets did. 
and in the same manner that all major religions call on us to do. We're placed on earth to take care of it and not destroy it. Because we are the successors, we are the khalifas, we are the khulafa, we can see that our purpose in life is to take care of this whole world. You guys, this whole world. Humans, environment, plants, and animals. Not just humans, but our whole world and society and everything that's in it. Our purpose in life is to have peace, respect, and harmony with one another. It's to coexist with humanity and the rest of God's creation. Since we know what this is, the purpose of life, we might ask ourselves, how do we achieve this purpose? What am I supposed to do? Very simply, you guys, just think about behavior and interaction. Behavior and interaction. So let's define behavior. Behavior is the way that we interact and deal with one another. So basically, it's the way that we behave. It's the way that we act. So let's take a few examples of what behavior is. A good example of behavior could be what? When you meet someone for the first time, you shake their hand, you say, hi, I'm Amir, how's it going? You smile very big. You want your teeth to show, especially if you brush your teeth that day in the morning, so you're just smiling in their face. So that's a good example of a good behavior. What about bad behavior? Bad behavior would be when someone walks in their house, kicks off their shoes, throws their jacket on the floor, doesn't say to anybody, and just walks straight to his room. That's bad behavior. And what do we call such a person? A, a, douche, a douche bag, probably? So this is a bad behavior, basically. So behavior is the way that we interact and that we behave. And it's important to think about our own behavior and how we deal with the world. Because behavior is a very powerful tool. So we need to be careful how we use it. When we think about religion, what do we think about? Going to church, going to the mosque, praying and fasting. This is very important and this is correct. But don't you think that there are other things our prophets were trying to teach us? Let's see what Jesus, peace be upon him, said in the Bible in Luke chapter 6, verse 31. He says, treat others in the same way you would want them to treat you. I'd like to repeat, treat others in the same way that you would want them to treat you. That's a very straightforward message. That's actually a prescription of how we should live our lives. Imagine what kind of world we would live in if we just took this concept of treating others in the same way we want to be treated. Let's see what Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had to say about behaviors. He says, I have not been sent except to complete the most perfect of manners. Imagine, he has not been sent except to perfect manners and behavior. I assume that this is a very important topic because our prophets are emphasizing on this, right? But why? See, because our actions reflect our belief. Our behavior is revealed through our actions. So what we do is a reflection of who we are. So let's take examples of how our actions affect others. Let's take an example of littering. You're walking with a friend in a park, having a bag of, uh, eating a bag of chips. The garbage bin's a bit too far, so you decided just to toss it on the floor. Five minutes, 10 minutes later, someone else does the same thing. You have a lot of garbage bags. But what this does is it makes the area, the park or the playground, less appealing, less attractive. And this will discourage people to come to that area. So emphasize, you guys, the decision I took to throw a bag of chips on the ground discourages those behind me to even come to that area. As simple as a bag of chips. What about plants? Let's say I decided to plant a tree, small little seedling, I just threw a seed, and that little plant grows into this huge tree a few years later, a few months later, 
greenery in general makes a place look beautiful and makes a place look wonderful. So my simple action of planting one tree, if I was to gather all my friends and neighbors and we all planted trees in a neighborhood, that whole neighborhood looks beautiful. So my simple action will affect others. For example, it will provide shade for my neighbor for whenever he plays soccer, he wants to rest in the shade. I provided that for him by planting a tree. Planting trees keeps the air clean, correct? It helps regulate the levels of carbon dioxide. Animals can even find shelter in those trees. So I want you guys to think about it. My actions affect others, but not only humans. As we saw in those examples, the environment and animals as well. By nature, humans are social creatures. We're meant to live in groups. We're meant to socialize, we're meant to act, we're meant to be social. So it's only natural that we, we affect one another through our behaviors. And keep in mind, you guys, our survival as humans depends on coexistence, on living together. So yes, my actions affect those around me. We're not alone on this planet. We live here as one unit, as one family. So what do we realize? That my decision that I took to act or not to act, to be good or to be, to be bad, to be happy or to be sad, affected those around me. Pay attention, you guys. Therefore, I have something that's called my sphere of influence. My sphere of influence. And it's my responsibility to make sure I influence those people around me in a positive way, in a respected way, in a good way. And it's not only those immediately around me. It's the globe as a whole. How? Let's take another simple example. You might go back home and say, ah, there was a guy 50 minutes, wasted my Thursday, I wish we never heard anything from him. Or you guys might say, you know what, there was something nice that this guy said at school. And you might share that with your friend, with your neighbor, with your sister, or with your brother. And you might affect them in a positive way, and you might enhance them in a positive way. So imagine that the fact that I'm here today talking to you guys, I may have indirectly affect someone else. So we have the ability to influence people that we know and that we don't know. And we can influence them in a positive way and in a negative way. And you guys are the ones who decide how you want to affect the world around you. You guys are the decision makers. And if our actions are affecting other people, shouldn't, it, shouldn't we be the ones responsible for that? Definitely, yes. We should be responsible, and that's why I'm here today, to advise you guys to look beyond your immediate surroundings. And in the concept of coexistence, to think globally. We all need to expand our circle of responsibility.